But after being born with just 20% of his sight, Jesse Dufton's eyes have deteriorated so that he is now almost completely blind. However, that's not stopped Jesse from pursuing his dream of becoming a Team GB paraclimber. And now he's about to embark on his most extreme challenge yet with his wife as his guide. We're wow. joined now by Jesse and his wife, Molly. Morning to both Good of you. Good morning. But the entire studio, there's not many of us in here, but the ones that are in here all went, oh, my God. How? Um, what? Are, you, are you free climbing there? There's no ropes. There are ropes, but the ropes are only there to, like, as a safety mechanism to catch you if you fall off. Oh they don't aim. Oh, my God. God for that. Right, OK, right. Well, let's go. We'll go back to what that <laughs> is in, in just a moment. Let's start, start from the beginning and explain your loss of sight. So you, this is a condition that you were born with. Yeah, so I have a genetic condition that affects the light sensitive cells in the back of my eye. So I was born with pretty terrible sight. Um, and then slowly over time, more of the back of my eyes died off. And we're now at the point when I can kind of tell a, I have a tiny bit of light perception in a tiny narrow field of view. But when I hold my hand out here, well, I know I'm wiggling my hand, but I can't see it. Um, and when I'm climbing, I can't see any of the holds, I can't see any of the gear as I'm placing it. Basically, I don't have anything useful. You said you said it was like looking down a straw with cling film at the end of it. Yeah, I think that's probably the best uh, analogy. It's not it's not perfect, but imagine a straw with I don't know seven layers of cling film. I don't know how many you'd need, but a few. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, and so climbing for you was a love that you had from a child, and was it something that you used to do with your father? Yeah, that's right. So my uh, dad took me climbing basically from the age dot. Really, I think I did my first route when I was two. Um, uh, and also, I like to say they don't really have much choice in the matter about getting into climbing, but, you know, I stuck with it and it was something that I grew to love as well. I think I did my, I led my first route when I was like 11 or something, so... But this yeah, is also so, something that, encouraged by your father, so did he have a, um, all right, come on, crack on type of thing? We know that there's an issue with the eyes here, but you're perfectly able-bodied other than that, so on, on you go. Uh, yeah, I think so. I think they were kind of... Um, a bit late to realise how serious my eyesight, my eye condition was. Um, I, uh, through personality, I've always been very good at just getting on with it and like finding workarounds. And you know, when I had uh, more vision, often I'd be able to mask the fact that it was terrible, but I was coping. Just, yeah. And so it was at university that you met Molly, who's with you now. Um, and Molly, when you first met him, you didn't realise that there was any issues with his sight at all, did you? Um, no, not really. It wasn't it, uh, like it wasn't blatantly obvious that he. Um, well, I guess he couldn't. Uh, and maybe about five percent vision back then. But yeah, like he hit it really well. He was really capable, and yeah. And so there's a mutual love of climbing, Molly. Is there? Yeah. So I climbed with my uncle when I was um, yeah when I was younger as well, and they're obviously Jesse climbed with his dad, so we were both yeah. Uh, really keen climbers, I guess. Keen climbers. But, I mean, your job and your role now is hugely important because you act as his guide, essentially. You are his eyes whilst he's up there climbing. So not only is that a huge responsibility for the man that you love, how does it work? Yeah. Um, so, obviously, like, it's been uh, a gradual process, I guess. So, um, like, as his eyes has got worse, then um, I have to describe things in more detail. Um, and like when I'm guiding, a lot of people ask, "Oh, like, isn't it really scary? Like it might fall." And um, I think you're just like absorbed in the moment, like 100% focus, so you don't really think about it. So, yeah. Well, you you said something to us here, which you know, I'm quite obviously, you know, Jesse's fully aware of. But um, but there are times when you may not have been entirely truthful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was asked in the film actually. Um, it is covered in there, but. Um, I was asked if I ever lied to him, and and I said I do, yeah, quite a lot. In, in what <laughs> way? How do you how do you lie when he's dangling off a cliff? Uh, well, I guess a good example is when um, when we got to the cliff top and we were looking over at the old manor foy, um, like it looked really intimidating, really scary. Um, yeah, I wasn't sure if we'd be able to do it, and yeah, I just stood there telling Jesse, "Oh, it looks amazing. Yeah, it's gonna be so cool." <laughs> Wow. Are you aware, Jesse, that uh, that you know that the, the tone of her voice, she may be being incredibly encouraging, but in actual fact, she's lying through <laughs> her teeth. <laughs> yeah, it's usually when she's nervous that she's like, "Yeah, it looks fine." Uh... <laughs> yeah, you're not falling for that at all. So this is challenge that you're attempting in tonight's documentary. Why this one? And just explain what that rock is for anyone that doesn't know. 
So it's the Old Man of Hoy. It's a 137 meter tall sandstone pillar rising up out of the sea off the Orkney Islands in uh, northeast coast of the UK. Um, it's an iconic route, um, and it's probably the hardest rock route I've ever done. Um, and why why do it? Well, because it's fun. Because I enjoy it. Like um, people often kind of uh, when they when I tell them that. I climb and I can't see. There's two questions. There's the how and there's the why. Mm. Um, and I think the why is uh, it's something that I always done and I enjoy the challenge. And if you're going to do a challenge, you've got to have a chance of failure. If it was easy, then it wouldn't be fun. You wouldn't get that sense of satisfaction from having completed it. But there is a part of this, Molly, in, in this climb that you actually can't see him. Yeah, so the climb actually goes around a corner. So I'm stuck on one side of the of the rock, and Jesse like moves round uh, at the corner, so he's out of my view. Um, but I've read the guidebook beforehand, so I know like roughly the line, so I can kind of describe it to him without even being able to see. The, gu the guidebook. He's climbing by a guidebook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so there's like ledges and cracks and yeah, things to look out for, or things he can feel that you know are like, obvious for for him, and. Uh, there is one point where the radio is cut out as well, so we don't even have any... Oh, my any... gosh, I can't bear it. Jessie, mm. in all honesty, although this is a challenge and you love what you do, are there times when you're up there and, you, and you're scared? Uh, what, type two fun, you mean? Yeah, I think... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> type two fun. Um, uh, yeah, that... The, the, on the old man of Hoy, it wasn't that bad, but there have certainly been a few situations where, yeah, you just grit your teeth and it'll... It'll be a good experience after, afterwards and, you know, when you're back safe and warm. Mm. Well, you, um, you actually challenged some of the other climbers to, to climb blindfold, didn't you? Yeah, so there's, a, like, one of the best climbers in the world, Neil Gresham, um, features in the film, um, and we go and do another classic uh, rock route with him, and I lead it, which means I'm the one going up first, and he seconds it, so he's following up after me with the rope above him. Um, but he's got a blindfold on to really kind of like make him appreciate you know what's involved because i think that um most most people kind of can't really comprehend it but the more you know about climbing the more like impressive it is when you know about how how you need to find all the holds and place all the gear and all the safety equipment that's the thing that blows most climbers minds how i can do that yeah, yeah I mean, you must just be like a real sensory climber, like using all your other senses. Um, you both love climbing so much, and that that made sense that it'd be the perfect uh, l uh, backdrop for the all proposal. Just explain how you proposed to Molly. So uh, in 2017, we went on an ex we organised an expedition to Greenland, um, and uh, we were we were lucky enough to get two first ascents. So a first ascent is when you're the first person ever to climb a mountain. Um, and on the first of these uh, mountains, it wasn't really suitable. It was like a jagged rock spike. But on the second, it was a nice snow dome. And uh, I had uh, decided that I was going to propose months beforehand. And I had a, a ring, um, which is one of these. Um, this is a, like a finger injury massage ring for climbers. Oh, so climbers get quite a lot of romantic. finger injury. <laughs> uh, How nice. Just what you always well, wanted, I imagine, Molly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, the thing is... <laughs> Like when you're on expeditions, like all the members of the team scrutinize all the bits of kit to make sure you're taking the minimum possible because obviously you've got to drag all this weight. Um, so if I'd have put, you know, a big gold ring with a diamond on, it would have got spotted. Yeah. And it would have possibly got lost because uh, the actual ring that I used in Greenland, after I'd done the deed, I dropped it and it's still <gasps> on the mountain. No! Oh, so, still, so one day you've got to go back and get it. Yeah, but... that's for sure. And that's another documentary. There you go. There you go. <laughs> and um, and as far as your sight is is concerned, and you say, you know, the, the 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 most hurtful thing, most upsetting thing, is that you haven't seen Molly for a long time, um, and that you know you're both young, so there is a possibility they can they can transplant, they can graft the first layer of cells onto a retina. It's your force four layers deep, so that's still mm. a way off. But there is a possibility in the future you may get to see her. There is a possibility. So I think that part of the reason that I can do what I do is I'm hugely optimistic. You know, if you're a pessimist, you you shut your options down before you even started. You've got to have an optimistic outlook. Um, so in my lifetime, I think it's 
quite possible that they'll be able to do something about my eyes. Um, it's not given, but think about how far. Oh, oh. oh. we've frozen. I think we have. Um, the documentary that we're talking, uh, let's, we'll see if we can get him back just to say goodbye, but that we're talking about is Climbing Blind, and that's tonight on BBC Four at 9 pm. That's an extraordinary story, isn't it? That was extraordinary. Yeah, it really was. Yeah, let's just we'll see if they're there. One more go just goodbye. to say goodbye. Are you still, are you there? Oh, you're, oh, you're there. back. You're back. Um, <laughs> it's been great to talk to you both. It really has. Thank you so much for joining us today, and you look after each other and stay safe. Will do. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and Thank fingers you. crossed for the future as well. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thank, Thank you very you. much.